This is Jay Addison live from Inside Bitcoins in Las Vegas with Nathan Lands, the CEO and co-founder of QuickCoin. Nathan, how are you doing today? Doing well. I just got off the panel of the new ideas with Bitcoin, and it's a pretty good talk, pretty constructive, talking about some of the new ways that people could be using Bitcoin. That's exciting. Uh, what brought you to the decision to focus on a Facebook-centric wallet? Uh, well, for us, Facebook was just a, a step one. You know, I, I'm of the opinion, and it's a somewhat contrarian opinion in the community that um, Bitcoin isn't all about being anonymous. That's just, you know, if you, if you want to be anonymous, you can do that. And in general, you don't even need software to do that, right? Bitcoin does that by default. Well, you could just someone give someone cash and be anonymous. Ex exactly, exactly. And so I didn't really understand that, that point of view. And so when we started the company, as, as a step one, I mean, because we're, we're definitely looking five years out and what we want to build, because this is all very long term. It's all, um, you know, it's like the Wild Wild West. It's really early. Um, and so we wanted to, you know, test the hypothesis. And, and my hypothesis was that, you know, Bitcoin, uh, there's actually some value in it being social and, uh, and showing people Bitcoin, making sure. it easier for people to get started. And so uh, there's been a, a somewhat of a misconception that we are a uh, Facebook Bitcoin wallet, which I kind of allowed people to think that's all we're doing. Uh, but for us, that was it's a first experiment. We, uh, we launched it about three months ago. Um, I had, you know, a, a lot of, uh, you know, support from the community, which we were, we were told originally that we wouldn't get that, <laughs> that people were going to hate it. Um, by many, many people in, in the community at a pretty high level. Um, and then when we launched it, we had over $150,000 was sent in the first 10 days uh, using the Facebook API. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, and for us, it was, a, it was a great sign to like, okay, move forward with like the, yes, the five-year yeah. plan. Yeah, you bet. Um, eh? And so that's, you know, we're not just a Facebook wallet for us. That's just a very small first experiment that gives us the uh, confidence to continue to move forward with our, our, our bigger vision. Well, what, what other uh, platforms do you plan on uh, spreading out to? Well, the way we're using Facebook, and we're, we're definitely going to have Twitter and our also our own login system. So the, the way we use Facebook is not how, I don't have any good examples, but there's some companies have used uh, Facebook login as a way to actually have their, that's the identity on that service is Facebook. Yes. We use it more like how Instagram or Quora uses it, where you don't, you still have an identity on that service. You have an identity on Quora, you have an identity on Instagram. Facebook and Twitter is just a simpler way to log in, as well as you can leverage those contacts right, on there right, to, make it, to make it a better user experience for people. So we're not, you know, it's not, your, your data is not on Facebook or something. They, you know, if, 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 even, even if Facebook shut us down, which they made one statement that was like, a, not a 100% thing, but it was like, we're probably not going to do anything because it's not a Facebook app. You know, they're using the mm -hmm. API. Um, but it, it appears that, I mean, even if they did shut us down, users would not lose their money. There's nothing like that. Right, yeah. right. It's secure. Yeah. In the Western world, people have very little direct need for Bitcoin in their lives. Yeah. Do you think easy access to coins through your wallet will be enough to get people to use it? No. <laughs> That's, uh, you know, I, I, I do think it is a, uh, a positive step forward towards that, though. Uh, so, like, the two biggest problems I see with Bitcoin right now, and, and, I, and I'm quite, quite surprised I didn't hear people talk to, about them much. Like, for example, Bobby Lee from BBC China, he was talking about why the price is down and all this. And he, he had some possibly valid points, um, but also I think he came from the agenda of wanting people to be speculating on the price of Bitcoin. So right. his, uh, his uh, points were maybe skewed towards that a, a bit. Um, I think that the two reasons are, number one, there's too many speculators. So actually what he's promoting is actually one of the problems. Um, so there's too many speculators in Bitcoin. Speculators, speculators are okay, but there's way too many of them right now. They're yes. like they're actually controlling the market. They're controlling the community, um, and that's you know, I love the community, but at the same time, you, you need a more diverse community yes, uh, do. supporting yes. Bitcoin. You can't just have speculators controlling it because obviously then they're they're all going to support their own agenda of making money off trading. That's as a company, we we don't trade. We don't make any. We don't do anything like that to make money on the side or something. We've made a point of it mm -hmm. that we don't do that. Um, it's based on like a rule of our company. Um, so, so to, to clarify, the two big problems, too many speculators, not enough non-speculators own Bitcoin. Yes. That's a major, major problem. Uh, and number two, there's not enough innovative ways to use Bitcoin that cash doesn't do better. Um, people are, are getting a bit excited about like all the sales that happen on Overstock and other places. I do think those are, those are great. It's a good step in the right direction. But the, but the reality is for a lot of those things, it's, it's, I think those things are going to be successful as a side effect. Like if people have Bitcoin for other reasons, things that cash can't do, mm -hmm. then also they're going to have Bitcoin to use for those things. But people got a little bit confused or they purposely hyped it up that, you know, there's a million dollars in transactions. Well, the price of Bitcoin was up. Um, the price of Bitcoin was down. Well, you're not going to see that as much. Right. You may not see any at all. Um, that's what we've seen at my wife's restaurant in San Francisco is that 
the price is down, we, we, we don't see any transactions at all, like zero. Well, it's back to the speculators, We went right? from like two or three. I mean, like, we were having a ton, but we went from like two or three a week to like zero. Wow. Absolutely zero. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah. And, I, and that's back to speculation, right? They don't want to yeah. trade them in. They're too waiting. many speculators, not enough innovative ideas. I think too many people are taking the old thing and applying it to the new thing. Kind of like in the early days of the internet yeah, exactly. where you go, a pet store, and I'm going to put a pet store on the internet. Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah. well, you need to take a few steps beyond that and also imagine like, what's the new landscape? What's the new technology? What, how does this work that's different than the real world? Same thing with Bitcoin. There's not enough uh, innovative ideas. Um, so the way we're trying to address that and help is that uh, we're trying to make a product that makes it extremely easy to share Bitcoin. And for people who are speculators or, or people in the community, that they need to be giving back a bit and actually getting people started with Bitcoin, sharing the passion, show them how easy it is and taking away some of the, the conceptions of it's such a scary thing, you know, like with the next version we're rolling out, when you go, if you, you send Bitcoin to someone, it's going to be a pretty cool, fun social you experience. I'm, I'm from like the video it. game industry, so we're trying to make it, you know, make it more fun and, and accessible for people. Um, and then, of course, long term, we have some some ideas that we're working towards that I, it's not going to be the, the holy grail, the only solution. But I think it, what we're working on is one step in the direction of something unique that could actually ha have people using Bitcoin. Very cool. You've got a history of starting gaming related companies. Yeah. Do you have any future plans to involve Bitcoin gaming integration? Well, actually, I mean, we, we uh, um, our, our advisors, we have we have, I think, 10 advisors now. And I, I went through the. Uh, it's a concept from Tony Conrad, a uh, pretty, pretty famous uh, entrepreneur in, in the Valley. And uh, his idea was of creating luck. So instead of having like one or two advisors that you give a bunch of stock to, instead you have more who are basically like they're extend, the extended family of the company. And you give them a, a, a pretty small amount, but it's just to have them involved and kind of create luck. And, and they're, tip, they're mostly my friends anyway. So we have a few people. We have uh, Kevin, the CEO of Kabam, which is the number two social game company in the world. Okay, I think cool. they're actually more profitable than Zynga these days. Wow. Um, and a few other people, um, as well as Kai Huang, the creator of Guitar Hero, and a few other cool. people are advisors. Um, there's, there's several others as well, some guys from Riot Games and some other people. You guys have got a cool company. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I was actually saying yeah to something else. I wasn't saying yeah. <laughs> I was is, actually yeah. think, I was thinking about something else. Um, but but yeah, we're we're definitely looking at that. And I've even had conversations with like Rob Perdo, the top guy at Blizzard, and some other people just to like bounce around ideas. Um, the, the, one of the big challenges with that, and I think it's it's interesting. It's definitely interesting, um, especially if you start to think about like a, a a global virtual currency for these games, or the fact that you just take the transaction cost down, mm -hmm. or the fact that you can keep people in flow more because you can have a really cool user experience with Bitcoin where you just press a button and it's kind of done. Uh, these things are interesting. One of the main problems is a lot of gaming's moved to, uh, to mobile. And uh, you don't see that many companies doing uh, things outside of mobile um, because the money's not there except for a handful of companies. So if you're like your Blizzard or your Activision or you're one of the big guys, sure, you can make money because you've got, it's like a movie business You've got a user now. base already. It's almost like a movie business. You, you can go and put a ton of money. You got, you got the... You got a franchise, and occasionally you experiment with a new franchise. Mm -hmm. Very rarely, maybe once a, you know, once every three years. <laughs> and besides that, you just copy the, you know, the franchise yeah. and apology and all this stuff. And so, it's really there's been a gigantic transition from, uh, you know, console games, all these kind of things, to like mobile. And so, with that being said, uh, the problem there is that you run into a lot of gatekeepers like Apple and places and yeah. like that. And so that's that makes some challenges for for using Bitcoin. Uh, in gaming, but we're definitely looking at it, and I, I mean, I think if it was to happen, I'm, I'm probably in the best position of any Bitcoin company to to make it happen. And so, and we're, we're we're in constant conversation with game companies and friends of mine who are CEOs of pretty big game companies to explore what's possible. I'm really That's interested cool. in it, but I, I don't see any clear path to that yet. It's coming. Hope, hopefully so. Uh, how many users does your Facebook wallet have today, and what are the daily transaction volumes look like? Uh, so the daily transaction volumes went down quite a lot. It, it, it boomed when we first launched, and I, I, I still think this is a, an indicator of what I've been seeing elsewhere is that people aren't actually using Bitcoin. It's mostly speculation. And uh, so I think that's one of the reasons that, it, that it's went down quite a bit. But we have a little over 16,000 users, and as I said before, uh, we're, we're, we're nearing almost $200,000 in transactions have happened. That's fantastic. Yeah. And the daily, it's kind of hard to report the daily because it's so all over the place. You'll have one day where there's not much at all, and one day where there's a pretty large, some pretty large transaction. Do you have access to the private keys of your users' coins? No, we do not. No. Is there a way for users to recover their funds if something happens? 
we are, we are going to have um, a way to. What do you mean by something happens? Like if we're, if we're shut down or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we don't have that yet. We're definitely going to have it. I mean, it's uh, when we when we launched, we launched with a bunch of things that people would expect that we would have and we didn't have. But for us, it's like the typical Silicon Valley startup. Sure. It's like before we even start the company, we want to have an idea that's like we're going to take out five or ten years and then test to see if, if, we, if we're going in the right direction, to see if like what we're thinking has some signs of maybe being true. Uh, and so that's what we did with the wallet. And so instead of building all these, these uh